In this quiet country town of Hamilton, Victoria, 65 years ago, a man had a vision. That man was Reginald Miles Ansett. This is the story of the man who made it possible, Sir Reginald Ansett. A story of a man with a vision and a great deal of persistence. In this program, we'll examine the man and his remarkable mission in life. He was a fellow that came out of the bush, literally. He was a very down-to-earth fellow. He had no pretensions to grandeur in any shape or form. The company was just like one big family. And... Uh... It's famous quotation that he wouldn't have a woman pilot at any price. Now they've got 15 or 20 or something. Uh, it was rather, uh, rather an, uh, a, an indication of his determination to try and get his way. The air war was hotting up in Australia. In July 1936, the second Australian National Airways was formed from Holyman Airways and Adelaide Airways. The following year, Reg Ansett moved his base from Hamilton to Essendon Airport. With the backing of Graziers, Ansett Airways was registered as a public company with a capital of 250,000 one pound shares. The airline is still flying. In the 1930s, this was the last word in air travel. It was with the Electras that Ansett set up his first network, but money was short and Ansett shares slumped. That's when Australian National Airlines tried to buy him out. In the midst of the ANA takeover attempt came disaster. In a fire in this hangar at Essendon, five aircraft were destroyed, including the Fokker with which Reg had started the airline. Shares in Ansett slumped to 10% of their original value, but Reg didn't turn a hair. Amid the ashes of his airline, he told his staff to get on with the job the best they could. To start with, the merged airline, Ansett ANA, faced tremendous problems. Their own executives were only attuned to working and planning a small operation. Now Reg Ansett was in the big time with Big Boy's Toys. Very well, thank yeah. you. How was the flight? Wonderful flight, very good. Everything went perfectly and a beautiful aeroplane. Um, tell me, sir, why did uh, Ansett ANA specifically select the 727 as a Viscount replacement? Uh, well, it's not a Viscount replacement. It's the, it's the uh, jet age now, and it's the best jet for this type of, uh, for inside Australia, the best jet in the world, and it's as fast as anything in the world. So it's the best, and it's just good enough for Australia. Menzies could see that Ansett ANA might get too big for its boots. That's when he formed the two-airline policy, which in effect put a clamp on Ansett ANA, outrivaling TAA. He claimed he would buy up to 20% of the stock if Reg Ansett gave him a controlling interest in the Melbourne and Brisbane TV stations. So Reg was happy for Holmes Court to succeed him. But that wasn't to be. In October 1979, other players entered the fray. News Limited's Rupert Murdoch and TNT boss Sir Peter Abels. They carved up Ansett Transport Industries and pushed Sir Reg into the coal. Sir Peter was already on the board. Now he became chief executive. How did you end up before he died? Were you good friends? I can't say good friends. Through international airline flying 747s is something that was a step on from what his vision was, but I have no doubt that he would have been delighted about it.